December 16th, 1965, you land in New York aboard the Queen Mary. I understand to get started, you, you sold transistor radios. Yeah, we, we were staying at the Bryant Hotel. Uh -huh. And it was Christmas, you know, it was 16th of, the 17th, 18th of December, and I was sitting, looking out the window, wondering, uh, uh, I couldn't get in the Union for six months. And I was wondering what I was going to do. So I went to Corvettes on Fifth Avenue and asked them for a job, you know, a temporary job over, over uh, Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I landed up in, the, in the, this place, in this department selling uh, transistor radios. <laughs> and they had a wonderful scam going because they used to, they used to sell a transistor radio for three dollars. You know, they 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 get about three thousand of these uh, transistor radios, three dollars a time. Advertise it in the paper. Everybody in New York came to buy a transistor radio for, for so they could hear the ball game uh, for three dollars. <laughs> and sure enough, you know, they bought it on Saturday or Sunday. Monday or Tuesday, they came back and said, uh, "This doesn't work." He said, "But I'd like to buy something better." So we sold them a transistor radio for ten or twelve dollars, <laughs> and that's that's the way it worked. That's hey. So I was there for about six months, and then I got a call from Woody Herman, thanks to Nat Pierce and Jake Hanna. Nat Pierce and Jake Hanna I met in London. They used to come to hear Helms Band all the time when they were in London, and uh, Nat and Jake were pretty good friends of mine. So they recommended me to Woody. So. The first thing I did was go out to Kansas City and join Woody's band. Hmm. That was, so your first gig with Woody, not New York, was in Kansas City. Kansas City, yeah. And where was um, where was Serge Chaloff in, in any of that? Was he? Serge Chaloff was long gone. Long gone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tom Boris was was the baritone player before I came in. Okay. And the saxophone section was uh, Sal Nistico, <laughs> and Joe Romano, and Carmen Leggio. Okay. And yours truly. Uh -huh. A four-piece saxophone section, three tenors and a baritone, you know, four brothers style. Four brothers, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I never had anybody play the tenor like Sal Nistico. Wow. He was such a wonderful player. He had this articulation that was, that was unbelievable, you know? You know you, Woody would, would beat off uh, Caledonia or, or do diddle doodle do diddle do do What's that tune called? do diddle doodle do diddle diddle doodle do diddle do do And Sal used to go out and play this solo and tongue every single note, hmm. and he was amazing. Wow. He couldn't play slow, but he could play faster than anybody. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> With that articulation, too, kind of like, I mean, Cannonball. Now, we had some wonderful people in the band, though. We had Bob Burgess on trombone, who came from Germany and came back to the States, and we had Al Daly on, on piano, Albert Daly from Philadelphia. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful piano player. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I had a great experience with Woody's band. But it was a very, very, very hard band. You know, it was, it was very tough to travel, mm. you know, doing 10, 12 hour bus rides practically every day. And of course, there was very little money. And, and uh, um, I left Woody's band and came back to New York. And that's when I started working in New York. During my time in England, you know, Duke Ellington's band came to England. And that was the first time since 1933 that Duke's band had been in England. Mm with Paul Gonzalez and Clark Terry and, and uh, Cat Anderson and Lawrence Brown and, you know, Sam Woodyard. And, and they had this wonderful bass player called Ernie Shepard, who he was a tremendous bass player. And Duke, of course, on piano and, and, and the band, and Johnny Hodges was there. And on baritone. And, and Harry Carney. And they did, they did 26 concerts. And we saw, Humph, Humph and I saw about 23 of these concerts. We wow. used to drive around all over the place. Following them. Following them, yeah. and, and he used to have concerts at six o'clock and nine o'clock, two shows a night. And at six o'clock, the band, would, the curtain would open, and there'd be six people on the bandstand. Mm. Uh, you know, the rhythm section, and ha Harry, and Jimmy Hamilton, and maybe Lawrence Brown, and Harry would kick off, take the A train, and it would sound exactly the same mm -hmm. as as it did with the big band. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you know, that, that that was a wonderful experience to see Duke's band up close and meet them because they all couldn't believe that we showed up every night. I remember I bought Johnny Hodges a, a drink. I said, can I buy you a drink? He said, yeah. He said, uh, I'll have a triple brandy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, okay. Can I buy you three drinks? <laughs> and the Basie Band came over too. The Basie Band was just fantastic. I never had a band play an ensemble like that, you know, so quiet and so beautiful, yeah. where you could hear every instrument. 
sure. And it was a it was a fantastic band. Frank West and Frank Foster and Marshall Royal. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it, you know, that when I came to America, I'd be playing with Frank Foster and and Frank West. Uh, yeah. And I, I did some jazz parties with Marshall Royal and Snooky Young. And all these people were, you know, were like, were like heroes to me. Sure. And I couldn't, when I played with Thad and Mel's band, I used to look around the band and I couldn't believe all the people that were in the band. Wow. Now we got as far as Woody Herman. We got up to, we got up, we were at Woody. Yeah. Um, and then really you started working in New York. Quite I started a bit. working in New York. Doing things, and I, I used to work at uh, I worked at Madison Square Garden for a while, because there was a, a, a contractor called Jack Shandlin, and uh, he used to contract all the, all the things at Madison Square Garden. You know, th at that time, there was an ice show in 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 January. Uh, the ice show lasted like three or four weeks, and we did like a triple recording session with that. And then there was the uh, the Disney show, and. Uh, uh, another ice show in in July, <laughs> and you know the, all these shows that uh, and Frank Sinatra and Barbara Streisand and you know all these people mm -hmm. came to Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I remember uh, at that time something for Pepper, and then Pepper, Pepper's mother got sick. And this is I always admired Pepper for for doing what he did. He went to Detroit to take care of his mother. And he, he was there for like three and a half years. Wow. And I played with Sad and Mel's band for three and a half years with Jerome Richardson and Jerry Dodson and Eddie Daniels and mm. Joe Farrell and myself. Wow. It was unbelievable. That is. So your first introdu introduction to that band, which is now the, the Vanguard band. Yeah. Still Monday nights. You were playing on Monday nights? Uh, every Monday. You said, you said it was quite a hang. That, every uh, Monday was like a, was like a, a special thing. You said uh, some some of the musicians who came through Miles Davis, Miles several Davis times, came. Charles Mingus, Andrew Bill Previn, Evans. Miles Davis, Andrew Previn, uh, Paul Gonzalez used to used to That's come right. all the time. Ray Nance and Don Bias came one night, and 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 uh, I never saw anybody that bond in my life as uh, Ray Nance and and Don Bias. They were obviously been hanging out for two or three days, <laughs> and Ray Nance said, "I want to play the blues." And Thad said, okay, all right. So uh, we played the first set. The second set, Ray came back and said, I want to play the blues. Thad said, okay, just wait. <laughs> and we'll, so the third set came, he, and, and Ray came up with his violin and started playing the blues. And he was playing the blues, and he started sinking. Oh, no. <laughs> he started really sinking. And Thad got a hold of him by the back of, back of his collar. And Thad was holding him up. Oh, <laughs> while he's playing? <laughs> while he's playing, he's playing the blues. <laughs> that was one of the funniest things I ever saw. That's great. And Don Bias, we were talking to Don Bias in the, in the back. They were great. Monday nights were wonderful. Yeah. Now, how long did you play in that band for? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. And that's all kind that's of That's when Pepper came Pepper. back. Right, right. It was always Pepper's gig. Right. You know. But you were on it every Monday night. Yeah. For three and a half years. 